Hey everybody, so when I go thrifting or I go to an estate sale or yard sale, one of the rooms that I kind of make a beeline for at an estate sale is actually the home office. And one of the reasons for that is that there can a lot of times be treasures just hidden in plain sight. So a lot of times items in the home office are not valued, especially vintage items, which we'll focus a lot on the vintage items today. Um, maybe are not valued as much by the people pricing the items. And so you can get fairly good deals. Your competition's a little bit less. Everyone else has run to the toys and the books and the kitchen and the Pyrex and all that jewelry. And the home office kind of just gets not, maybe not overlooked, but just kind of gets a cursory glance and everything. But I, I do like to look at vintage office supplies. And I have sold quite a few different types of these things over the years. So I just wanted to share some of that with you, share some of the things that we've sold and share um, some information on eBay and pricing and brands and things like that and see if they're still doing pretty well today. I've you know done this for 15 plus years. And so I, um, you know, some things we used to sell pretty well, don't sell so well anymore. So that's that's things we need to take a look at as well. Um, I really do like doing these um, research videos because there are things that I've sold in the past that I kind of forgot about. And it, it puts all these things back on my radar again and kind of opens my eyes to some new thoughts on that whole subject of office supplies and selling them on eBay. Um, one thing I just wanted to say about the research videos that I do like this is that if this is just a starting point for you guys to kind of do your own research as well. I'm just kind of showing you because of time restraints, it's just a snapshot of potential sales. So it's not giving you the whole story. It's not, you know, I can show you something that sold for $250 but how long did it take to sell? Did it take two years? We don't have really time to dig deep into that. So go ahead, do more research on these things. If there's like a category that we talk about today that you're like, oh, that's cool. You know, go ahead and do more research on that. So I just want to make that clear that this is kind of just a starting point just to kind of give you the idea of the potential that's out there. Okay, so today we're going to hit about five or six different kind of areas or topics of home office supplies. I thought I could make this video and make it one video, but it's going to have to be two videos. So we will get as much done today as we can. And then I will have a follow-up video with even more office supplies that you should be on the lookout for when you're out thrifting. But let's switch over to my computer. We've got some things to look at. And we are going to start by talking about staplers. So like I said, we were going to start by talking about staplers. And one of the biggest names that people are familiar with is swing line. So we're starting off here with eBay and we're looking at vintage swing line stapler. And as usual, I have gone down the side here and I have hit sold. Sold items is what we're going to look at. That's why the prices are in green. And up here under sort, I've switched it to highest to lowest, price plus shipping, highest to lowest. And let's just take a look at swing line. This first one was a bid and it had several pieces in it, but all the pieces were a very cool greenish blue turquoise kind of color. Then we have a swing line electric stapler that's new in the box. And we see a couple other with their original boxes as well. Then looking at this one, it was sold for more than $50, um, but look at that color. So that's one of the takeaways I took from this on a lot of these office supplies is color can make a big difference. A lot of desk and office type um, desk accessories or office equipment, you know, were very industrial and they were very like utilitarian with gray and everything like that. So mid-century, if they added a little bit of color to it, those are a lot of the pieces that end up getting a little bit of a higher price. So that one's really cool looking. Then this stapler, I swear I have seen it. I have used it somewhere. <laughs> 
and I can't think of where it is. And so I went and I looked to see the stapler we just kind of use. It's the one I showed in the introduction, and it's just a basic um, swing line black stapler. Sorry, I'll put it over here. And um, sorry, upside down as well. But it's made in the USA. Mine does have some paint loss and everything alongside of it. But I looked this up and this has sold for $20 in the past, right? So not a crazy high price for this, but maybe more than you would expect and might only be a dollar or less at a yard sale, right? Anyway, so look for that made in the USA. And there's usually a model number at the bottom that you can compare to eBay sold. So I still don't know where I've seen this stapler before. <laughs> And maybe we have it around here somewhere or I've used it just someplace else in the past. But anyway, I thought that was interesting. It's got a very sleek kind of mid-century look to it. And so, and then this part is chrome. So I think that, you know, looks and aesthetics do, do play a part. Um, you know, when mid-century things are popular, then everything, you know, lots of things mid-century are popular. So even, you know, people who decorate their homes mid-century look want their offices to look that way too. So um, they seek out those types of things. We have a couple more with boxes and just an older, very industrial looking size uh, style. The swing line strong arm, um, you can see it has just like a different mechanism for stapling. And then this one has some advertising. So there's a couple in here in the $40 range that have, this one has a Pepsi company advertising on it too, but also made in the USA and a good color. There's another strong arm. Somebody's lotting up a bunch of little ones. And then there's an automatic, like an electric one. There's a couple of those. So I would take a look at electric staplers, double check that they work. Um, color would be important if you find any with their original boxes and then also advertising is kind of our takeaways from here. So that's for swing line. Here's a nice long, it's called a long reach. You can put a longer piece of paper. Um, so very industrial looking. And so that's swing line. Now, if we go just in general to... Let's get back to the top. Vintage stapler in general. Got that same one we saw. Now, look at this. This has become one of my new bucket list items <laughs> that I, I'll need to make a new video. But this Danish design um, stapler, it's F-O-L-L-E, full, I don't know how to pronounce it, but this one's a 26, that one's a 24. Their Danish design. These, of course, are new in their boxes, so like $150 for these. And they, the listings say MoMA, so M the Museum of Modern Art. So they have, you know, a definite design factor to it that helps. Now, this brand is Hotchkiss. Um, it has copper and black and everything like that. And it's got its original box and it's vintage. That's sold for 135. There's our electric one again. Now this is interesting. These little baits, we, we've sold one of these little baits one on Etsy, but we only like sold our little one for $14. Um, this one is a new in the box one and there's a little grouping of them and they got $90. So that's interesting. Then this stapler is in the shape of a tiger head, okay? And you can see it says Ted Arnold. We're gonna come back and talk about Ted Arnold later, but keep that in mind, a figural stapler. It's kind of interesting. Um, there's a swing line again. And then this one is the brand Acco, A-C-C-O, but then it says Polaroid Corporation, so either it came from the Polaroid offices and that adds value to it. Okay, so here's another Denmark one. This one does not have its original box, but it's still sold for $85, which is interesting. This one is 1950s Wilson Jones. I see that name come up a couple times. Here's a very more antique one from the 20s, Hotchkiss. 
And here's a very, very antique one. It says it's dated 1896. So that's a very interesting looking thing. So yeah, my takeaway on these was, you know, an antique looking stapler, a very industrial, anything very primitive looking, take a, another look at, um, you know, look at this one. It's a stapler made in Spain. Just anything that has kind of a different look to it. And that's going to get you the higher prices, right? There's another Denmark one. There's another Ted Arnold. Another Ted Arnold, another Denmark. So these are these high, higher priced ones. And then if we go down here, let's go, let's just go another page and just get into kind of a little bit of a lower prices. There's some more electric ones. This is a, he a handheld heavy duty stapler. That's interesting. Um, but yeah, definitely some interesting, this one has its little original box. Ace, Ace Liner, see the color on that one, mint green. And then this little cordless electronics, electric stapler. I think that's kind of cool looking. Anyway, so that's just to kind of give you an idea. Staplers in general, I think would tend to get overlooked, but that's, that's my opinion. Maybe some of the really cool, awesome ones, people, um, People will maybe price a little bit higher, but you can see, you know, the prices that you could potentially get. And I think you're going to find, you know, if you have a chance to look at your phone and look up comps, you know, they usually have a number, a model number on the bottom, and you can double check before you, you spend any significant kind of money on a stapler. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about, it made me think of hole punches next. And this was interesting. So I looked up vintage hole punch. And so at first I had looked up just vintage hole punch, but leather punches were coming up and that's a different subject. So I added the word paper. And as you can see, there's 868 results for hole punches, right? All different. We've got these handheld ones. And then the ones maybe we're thinking of like a three hole punch or a two hole punch. And so then I went over to check solds and there's only 128 results for hole punches. So, so what are we looking at? 868, but in the last 90 days, only 120 have sold. So that's not really the greatest sell through. And so as I look down here, we have this kind of, um, this punch that's, it's tabletop press. It's very, you know, sp uh, specify like specific for a specific type of use. And so then the next highest one is $29 Wilson Jones. Again, it's very heavy duty commercial. Um, Boston is another brand, but that's sold, sold for 12, but with $33 shipping. Um, the shipping is high on a lot of these. So the prices are lower. Um, this one, 25, a little higher than 25. So punch a dex paper punch. That's not too bad. It's new in the box though. But we see, you know, I see some of these at thrift stores, you know, fairly often. And I just think shipping would be kind of high. It just depends on how low that you can get it. But the demand is not really there for vintage paper punch. So whether there's just not collectors or just you can buy a newer paper punch that does the same thing. But who knows? Because there's staplers still out today and people are looking for staplers. So anyway, this is just to give you an idea. I didn't want to be like, Oh, look how great all these paper punches sell. Right. You know, you gotta, you gotta look at the good and the bad, right? So paper punches eh, maybe not as much to get excited about. Now I am going to tell you about a paper punch that we have sold multiple times. I looked at my records and I think we've sold about 13 of these. And this goes way back to the beginning of, you know, 15 years ago when I started selling. This was one of these little things that I would kind of find fairly often and I was super excited to find and flip. 
not super high money, but what I'm talking about is a, a paper punch. It's a seven, either a six hole or a seven hole um, paper punch for, uh, by Franklin Covey. Okay, so Franklin Covey makes those planners and organizers and binders, and they make paper punches that will punch the seven holes so that you can put your own paper into those um, into those organizers, right? So I'd find them here and there. They'd be 99 cents at the thrift store, you know, kind of like this one a lot of times. And we would sell them consistently, you know, anywhere from $17 to $25 and they just always sell. And I think I, when I looked at my records, the highest I sold one, I actually ended up selling one on Amazon when I was selling on Amazon and that one sold for $29. So that could be an option if you're an Amazon seller and you come across one of these. Now what I thought was interesting is you can see the prices are not super high, $20, $21. A lot of people are doing free shipping with these. They do fit into a padded flat rate, which back in the day was less than it is now. Um, this one's 25 free shipping. Anyway, um, oh, I guess I don't, I guess I don't have my, my other thing. Okay, so maybe what I was going to do is this. We have 81 results that are available for sale right now on eBay. And if we switch over to sold, we see there's 90 that have sold. So that's actually a really good sell through rate. So there is a demand for these paper punches still. And as you can see, the prices, they charge 17, but they went ahead and charged $13, you know, for shipping. They have the box and everything. So anyway, that's just something if you want to keep an eye out for, we have always done really well with these. Um, I don't find them as often as I did back then. And so I might even be tempted to bump my price, you know, more at the 25 rate, you know, depending on the model. Okay. So that is something I just wanted to share with you about paper punches. Next subject we're going to talk about is pencil sharpeners. Okay, so this is kind of a little unusual one. It's not the pencil sharpeners I'm going to talk about mostly, but I just thought I'd share this old listing of ours. It sold last fall, and it was probably in one of our very early What Sold videos. But this was just a little die, like cast metal pencil sharpener, just a little one that you, you know, do it yourself kind of thing. And it shows it's selling for $28.99. I believe we took a $20 offer on that. But still, this was something, I don't even know where my husband picked it up, some little estate sale for a quarter, something like that. And um, it was a little bit of a novelty, it was made in Germany, and it had a market, and somebody wanted it. So look around in the drawers of the estate sales, too. You never know what kind of little gadget type things that you could come across. So that one was a novelty paper. Uh, pencil sharpener and I was gonna say maybe novelty ones would be good but I wanted to do a caution about novelty pencil sharpeners that I see fairly often at thrift stores and yard sales it's these little ones shown here they're all in different little shapes and they're they came in boxes I see them at antique malls people are trying to sell them for five or six dollars a piece and I just wanted to share some of these novelty Pencil sharpeners, I really actually like this one that looks like a roll of film. Um, you know, they're not going to be super high prices, this little plastic globe. Um, there's a church for $10. So here's more of these little novelty. They're kind of, they're brass, they're metal, and they're all in all these different shapes. And they just don't sell for very much. So I didn't want to be like, oh, go find novelty pencil sharpeners. And then you're going to find these and think that they're going to be worth a ton but they just don't sell for very much. So I just wanted to give you a heads up on that one. There could be some exception in there, maybe one of the super rare ones or something like that. And, you know, I am not going to say they don't ever sell, but just don't spend a lot of money on them. Okay, so let's look at the pencil sharpeners that we have sold. 
So as you can see, we sell a lot of the just manual, the ones that can be on mounted on a desk or on a wall. And you might also want to check if you're at an estate sale, check out in the garage, check out in the shop. A lot of pencil sharpeners like this ended up out in the shop. So we pick up most every kind of, of pencil sharpener like this, right? That's just the manual kind. Some do better than others. Some have, you know, interesting colors and things like that. So you can see some of the prices. This is in my husband's shop, Etsy shop. We had sold this um, little blue one for $28, this Boston for $24, barrel for $22, another barrel for $22, um, Boston $24. This one was $16. It was like a vacuum seal that you could mount and 16 and 14, okay? So our prices kind of went up over the years. And then you can see there's an elect, uh, electronic one, a plug-in one as well. Then let's take a look at some of the ones we've actually sold on eBay. I had to go to Worth Point to get those because they're older eBay listings, but you can see some better pictures. We sold this, the brand is Giant, and it was the patent on it was 1921. And we sold that for $25. And then this one, Boston, it, uh, let's see, anything special? I don't think nothing's super special about it. Sometimes people like the look of certain ones. Some are more Art Deco, some are more mid-century. This one sold for $30. And then this next one, I remember picking up at a, like a little antique shop on one of our trips and it was in its original box and the plastic turned out to be Bakelite and it just was like really super cool looking. There you go. It says it sold for $125 but it actually sold for $70 was an offer that we got and um, but it was red, it was plastic, it was so cool. And it had its original box, right? So that was probably our one of our best pencil sharpener sales. So like I said, we pick up all the manual crank ones. Um, and then let's take a look at electric pencil sharpeners, okay? Because that's another thing that might get overlooked. So I just put in electric pencil sharpener vintage. And we've got Panasonic. We've got this really awesome one. It's uh, by Presto. And basically it sits on your desk and you sharpen down into it, which I think is really cool. And then we see this Panasonic. Panasonic comes up fairly often in these um, top prices, right? So obviously in their original boxes are gonna do the best. Um, Here's a Mitsubishi one from the 60s that's green. That is crazy awesome. Um, another Boston. Here's a few more electric ones. And then here's a really cool, this would be fun to make an office. I think I might. I have to make myself an office, office supply, office tool bucket list. <laughs> because this Panasonic version is just so cool, right? And I would love to find an orange one. I don't know that we would be able to sell it. We'd probably have to keep it. But anyway, very mid-century, very uh, mod looking um, electric pencil sharpener, so. And then, you know, the uh, another kind of design where you go down and they're more for like people for drafting, right? I think that's the company does more things with drafting. There's some more of these. Oh, there's a turquoise one. Anyway, just keep that in mind, electric pencil sharpeners. Okay, let's go on to another subject. We are going to talk about just as you go into, you know, someone's home office, just the things that people use to organize their stuff on their desks. And, you know, this could be very broad. You could go into little trinket boxes and jars and things and pencil cups 
and all those types of things. But I'm just going to show you a few examples of some of the types of things that we've sold in the past that fall into that category of desk organizers. So first off is just these plastic. Okay, this is my husband's shop. We're going to switch over to my shop because I think I sold a few more of them. He, we found two of these green, avocado green plastic um, desk organizers, and they are by Max Klein. So let's take a look at mine. So these are the four that I've sold. I sold three yellow ones and a green one. And they're, they say Max Klein products or, or something like that on the bottom. But as you can see, just kind of simple, colorful plastic desk organizers. And our price was right around 24 to 18. I think my husband did 18 as well. That was a while back. And then, but see my latest one, I had bumped it to 24. So I think this is one of those things that I just haven't had these on my radar lately. And, um, you know, I think maybe if I had actually seen one, it might have popped out at me, maybe. Or maybe I've just been overlooking them because I've been focused on other things. I'm not sure. So that kind of put that back on my radar. But let's take a look at eBay and see how they do over there. I went ahead and did Max Klein and then I did Desk because if you just search Max Klein, there's all sorts of other types of products that they made. So I just went ahead and added that search word Desk. And it's, you know, file, pen holders. So we've got, I just, right now it's just listed on ended rec recently is what it's sorting by. So we have a green one, brown, brown. What surprised me was the number of brown ones that we're selling. Because to me, brown's kind of not so exciting. But then we've got yellow for 25 22.97 for a green one. So the prices are pretty much right around the same. That's really cool. This is just a little desk drawer organizer type thing. And they come in orange. I think that's orange. Maybe that's brown. I don't know. Okay, and green. So they still do sell. So that's nice to know. Uh, like right around the same price range as what we were getting. Another little fun thing that we sell that you may find at thrift stores and estate sales are these little letter mail holders that are in the shape of animals. <laughs> so um, the, we just call them like a brass coil letter holder. And we've sold this style a lot, whether it's a dog or a goat or whatever it is. Um, but We've sold it for 18. Way back, I was selling it for 10. You see, I started out back, it was 2012, and I was not pricing things as high as I ended up pricing things. Um, we have this little pig, and you see, I sold the dog a couple times. I would definitely price closer to the $18, $20 mark these days. This one was a nice mix of a ceramic dog with the brass coil. And then if we look over my husband's shop, he sold more of them as well. Once he kind of got his shop opened up, we moved, you know, every time we found one, we would put it over in his shop. Now he got 19 and then 24 for this deer or whatever it was, just a shape we hadn't seen before. Um, and then some of these are technically, uh, they were originally made to be holders for 45 records but a lot of people use them for mail so we would put both in our titles and so you can see he sold a few of those as well and then there's that little dog goat thing again too so anyway just a little thing that I thought I'd mention you know I usually pay 99 cents or less and we'll sell them for you know $19 18 19 dollars is what we would get out of them but they they seem to do fine on etsy and people kind of like that quirky little thing okay and then let's see then in general we've also sold this is my husband's shop again um we've also sold just kind of the industrial 
desk office organizing type things, whether it's little drawers or as you're seeing here, some of these file, um, file cabinet type things or even trays for your, um, for your desk that you can file papers in. So you see the brand on two of these Lightning, 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 maybe Lightning, that makes more sense. And um, one sold for 38, one sold for 32. Um, this industrial three tier sold for 27. And let me see if there was any, okay. So then I was like, let's go over to eBay and see what we see as far as that type of thing. So we have four shelf Vertiflex, you know, file tray holder sold for $50. This one has four. Um, it obviously didn't sell for 120. It sold for whatever between fifth, you know, this is $50 plus $80 shipping, which is crazy. Um, this one sold for front in the United Kingdom. This one is an offer for, you know, less than $95, but they had a lower shipping price. Then there's a Rolodex, which is a whole nother subject we'll talk about. And let's see, some of these have really high shipping, so their selling prices were lower, but you get the idea. Here's a nice, awesome red looking one. And yeah, so some people might not want to mess with these, but there's potential for some money in these if you're willing to package these up and ship them. You know, they wouldn't necessarily be breakable, but they would just kind of be bulky to try to ship. But just plain kind of metal, like what I was talking about before, they're industrial and they're just kind of very um, practical looking and utilitarian. And so they're just kind of basic colors. Okay, so just something to keep in mind. And then, then I just went to, um, I think this search, what did I use? Industrial? Yeah, I used industrial file. You know, there's, you can play around with the search terms and um, see the types of things you could be picking up. Now, then I just did vintage desk organizer and we have this really nice wooden one, right? This chrome from the 70s sold for $56. Danish modern, anything Danish modern. This is teak. It's very minimalist, very sleek. And then we have some more of the metal ones. Now, don't overlook plastic as well. This plastic, this can't, I believe this Kamenstein one is just a plastic um, desk organizer that holds stuff. Um, we have sold some of these before where they're like wooden trays with brass risers. And I know we had sold one of those before in the past. And then this one is metal, but it's orange and it's very mod looking. And that one got a good price. Here's some more of these metal. See, I took out the word industrial because not everyone uses that. And so we can see some more of these type things. There's another metal pencil tubular kind of look and that one was green there's a nice wooden one and then here's some plastic sometimes you see these these very mod uh, and modular type designs from the 70s so those are fun to keep an eye out for as well so anyway and it's kind of interesting because it is sometimes hard to find. I can see why people want to buy things like this, you know, the metal tray uh, file things. I was looking for some types of holders for my desk area, and they're sometimes a little harder to come by. So anyway, nice. We Yeah, the one we sold, I had forgotten to find our comp on that, but the one we sold I think was too... You know what? Maybe we didn't sell it. I think we kept it. I think my husband uses it or has used it. It could still be packed up in storage. Nice wicker one. That reminds me of 90s Y2K Pier 1 type things. <laughs> but 
people still like them. Okay, so anyway, and so don't don't forget about plastic. Here's a plastic one that we sold. We only got $15 for this. You can see it kind of has that same look as those, this, that awesome metal one. Um, I don't think this one even had a maker's name on it, so we just did $15, and it sold pretty quickly. I probably... This was a few years back. I probably would shoot a little higher at this point. And then we I <laughs> we sold these not these not that long ago. You might have seen it in a what sold video, but just these little plastic storage jars, you know, they kind of for a while seemed to be at like every garage sale that I was at. And these were new in the box and I had them kicking around in my to be listed for a really long time. Then I gave them to my husband, he listed them, and they sold really quickly for $35. So just these little plastic jars did pretty well. Great for paper clips and push pins and that kind of thing. Okay, one other thing I wanted to mention. While we're talking about organizers, these are not big money. As you can see, our selling prices are like $10, $9, $9, $9, $9. Um, they are laser craft. Um, is the company and they're usually a, a nautical type scene in in them and let me just see I'm gonna open this listing this was the most recent one and I get a picture of the they're made out of walnut maybe that one didn't have didn't have the maker's mark on it or is that what this is nope Okay. So anyway, um, we just kind of pick these up as like a no brainer kind of selling type thing. They're easy to spot, right? Some are pencil holders. Let's see one of them. I know like this one we sold for $12. So my husband usually lists these and they're just kind of filler for his shop when we come across them. And, um, they just always sell. And so I didn't get a chance to look at solds. Um, otherwise, I don't know if he kind of prices them competitively because there's a lot listed or what it is, but um, I just wanted to throw that out there. They're not huge money, but they're kind of guaranteed. So they usually don't cost very much when I come across them. Okay, another subject we're going to talk about is that we have actually done pretty well selling is desk lamps, task lamps, those types of things. Now I'm showing you, all I did was search on eBay. I searched desk lamp vintage and I, you can see that the potential for some kind of crazy rare ones are up in the thousands of dollars. Right, so we're not going to spend a whole lot of time looking at this. We're talking Tiffany, we're talking Handel, right? So very antique, rare Tiffany type desk lamps. Some mid-century designer lamps are up there as well. So what I did, I think, in the next thing is I narrowed down the search to go between like 35 and 75. Okay, so let's just start here. Um, we've got this this um, desk lamp that has a triple gooseneck design to it, which is awesome. This brass student lamp sold for 65. This one brand is Luxo, and it's articulating. And then we have Dazor is another brand. It's a drafting style lamp, 75. Tollware. Now, what stood out to me when I looked at this was the variety of styles of desk lamp, but all seeming to sell pretty well. We've kind of focused on the mid-century looking ones, um, but there are definitely other styles that work as well. Um, there's, you know, industrial, like the bench mount. You'll see those. We've sold a couple of those where you're, it's it's articulating. You can move it around. It might clamp to the uh, edge of a desk or a table, or you can attach it that way. Dazor is another brand. We have the banker style with the green shade, right? Things like that, right? 
this 1990s postmodern UFO style can sell pretty well. Okay, here's some more mid-century, these gooseneck style desk or student lamps. Luxo is another brand to look out for. This is from the 80s, kind of imitating a certain style. And then these big industrial desk lamps, we've sold a few of these as well. So just another something to keep an eye out for. Let's go over here. One brand that we've sold a lot is Tensor, T-E-N-S-O-R. You can see it up here in my search term, Tensor Lamp. Okay, so I came over here. Let's look specifically at Tensor. And um, they actually did one that was that banker style, um, you know, kind of a newer, newer look. This one is in its original box. Oh, it's brushed steel. Here's an orange one. Sold for $120. Just, you know, I've sold this lamp before, but it was brown. So it did not sell for $120, but the orange does. I've sold this one before too, but this one's in its original box. So very, you know, this kind of is like the Pixar lamp style in their little graphic. But there's also different styles that, like this one, Sight Light, that sells pretty well. A flying saucer kind of look. And then, and then you can go more industrial and not so much mid-century. But as you can see, especially the ones with the colors can do pretty well, or the original box. This one's kind of cool. I've never seen a Tensor lamp that has that Tiffany style shade. And then some more colors and then some more browns and things like that. Okay, so Tensor is kind of a good to go, good to go kind of brand that will show you some of the ones that we've sold. This was in my husband's shop. So we just kind of, you know, I pick up any kind of little articulating task, um, task style lamp that we come across. This one I think was the latest one. It was actually magnetic on the bottom. And so you could just, you could clip it up like above your desk or something like that, you know, or onto something metal, like your industrial steel desk <laughs> or cubicle or whatever. Okay. And then he sold, this is a globe shaped, it lights up on the inside. And so yeah, globes could be found in the office and that's a whole nother subject. This one is just a fake wood looking one with a brown shade sold for 36. We had this red industrial, more art deco style one that was like cast metal, $65. This blue one sold for $65 as well. A little red one sold for $35, $35, 24 Okay, and then popping over to my shop, one of my favorite sales for Tensor was this one I found in its original box, and I found it at like a flea market out in North Carolina when I was visiting my family, and I saw... The box in Tensor, I got super excited, and they it was like a brass color with black, and we sold that for $65. And then here's one we sold not that long ago, very similar to the one we just saw in my husband's Etsy shop. We had it twice. As you can see, in 2015, we sold it for $36, but now this year we sold it for $50 on eBay. So prices are going up, which is awesome. And we need to kind of keep that in mind. They're getting harder to find, right? And so people still like them, still want them. So we, we need to price accordingly. And it's just brown, but it sold for $50. Okay, so now let's talk about tape dispensers. Okay, so we talked about staplers and we talked about hole punch. I kind of naturally started thinking about tape dispensers. And there are definitely some that can sell fairly well. Um, 
if you know it starts off the high prices are these big you know big industrial type things this was interesting um it's kind of crazy so this is a figural novelty tape dispenser by sigma and it's totally broken right so star wars c3po ceramic tape dispenser they had ordered it it arrived broken they still resold it for 150 dollars because they said it's repairable so somebody really wanted that so you know they say it's super rare you know but imagine if you found one <laughs> okay so let me just go back all right that's right i can go over here so anyway yeah so there's these big you know manuals some of them are for like shipping tape type things but then holt howard which sells all sorts of different little ceramic things and dishes and, and things like that that are very, very collectible. They have a little bird tape dispenser, and that sold in the $100 range. There's another big kind of industrial packing tape dispenser. There's Ted Arnold again. Now this one's just scotch, right? Heavy duty style. And then there's my friend, Georg Jensen. And he had a stainless steel tape dispenser that sold in the UK or Australia for a hundred. And yeah, here's another one sold for $120. Very, very industrial retro vintage looking. Okay. And then if we go down. Okay. That's interesting. False graph which is a kitchen, you know, dishware company. They, they say it's rare, but they had a tape dispenser that matches their Yorktown um, dishes. So that's interesting. This one has a chrome handle, kind of looks like a whale a little bit. You can see there's a Lucite one that sold well. Here's another Holt Howard. This one's a Pelican instead a very cute figural type design and then a nice red one very um, retro looking sold for $65 so and then look at this one this is you know 1940s cast iron scotch tape dispenser I feel like I could find something like that at an estate sale even just out in somebody's garage or something like that and then take a look at these Takahashi. This one's a Siamese cat. Um, here's another one. Another Siamese cat sold for 60 And then the bulldog sold for 75 This bright yellow made in the USA scotch dispenser. $75 free shipping. So interesting. So just, you know, things that catch your eye. Things that are made in the USA. There's Holt Howard little novelty pieces maybe take a look at those as well so just giving you an idea of some of the potential that's out there then let's pop over to one of our sales this was Takahashi so like the bulldog and the Siamese cat that you saw this one was a fox and it's made in Japan and we actually sold this fox tape dispenser for $77 so it was just so pretty. And then it was with this, <clears throat> this matching little trinket box. And so, you know, you might just look at it as a trinket box, but because it was together with the tape dispenser, you figure it's kind of part of a desk set. So this could be, you know, you could use it to hold anything, but you could have, you know, stamps in it, or you could have paper clips or that type of thing. Now this one sold for a little bit less. You can kind of see there's a lot of crazing. You see these lines. It's like different. It's like cracks in the glaze. It's called crazing, right? But it's still sold for $30. And then I have a um, tape dispenser listed in my Ruby Lane shop and it's by Ted Arnold. I said we'd talk about Ted Arnold again. Um, this was kind of hard to find. It's not on eBay currently, but I found some on Worth Point, 
And so some had sold 75, 50, 75. So I, I have mine up here for 65. It's like a heavy brass tape dispenser. But if we look at Ted Arnold in general, some of his other tape dispensers, we saw the Tiger, right, $125. There was a horse head for 30, a frog for 90, you know, a snail for 40. So, you know, he doesn't just do the tape dispensers. He's got different paperweights and things like that as well. Um, you know, obviously I'm hoping things like this would catch your eye. And Ted Arnold also did staplers. I think we started off seeing the tiger stapler, right? 109, 100. A frog stapler for 70. A cannon stapler for 60. Another horse. An oyster. Okay, a Morse code telegraph um, stapler as well. Okay, so the frog, right? You get the idea. So, yeah, just a kind of fun one to keep an eye out for. And I will let you know if the one I have on Ruby Lane sells. And last little subject we're going to talk about for today, and then we're going to save the rest of all the things we want to talk about for another day, is just a fun little one that you might come across. We've sold these little perpetual calendars um, as you can see, the prices, the most recent one, my husband sold one. It was on marble and it had a place for a pen as well. And that sold for 35. This mid-century looking one sold for 15. And then they're just kind of basic little, this one had a sunset scene. This one had a globe. We're at like the 17, $15 mark. And so I went over to eBay to take a look and I put in perpetual calendar vintage flip. Okay, there's an old store countertop one sold for the most. I don't know what that's all about. Um, bunch of Soviet ones are in the top prices. There's a Florida souvenir one. And I just want to say I found a lot of these just hanging in the baggies at thrift stores, hanging on the baggy wall, just mixed in with a bunch of other stuff. So that's kind of where I look for mine. But then there's the Soviet come up a lot, you know, a little novelty type things, but that perpetual calendar thing is just kind of something people like to, to have and to buy. Okay. So I hope this was helpful information for you all. You can please, please, please drop down in the comments below. Just let me know if you've shopped the office, home office, parts of estate sales? Do you look in the office section at the thrift stores? Um, like I said, I have a list of a bunch more of different topics and things to look for that will be in the next video. And anyway, I hope you guys are having a great day. Hopefully sales have picked up for you a little bit and you're busy, busy working on your reselling business. So thanks everybody for watching and we will catch you again.